I've just received another kit today, which I'm hiding here behind my hands. Can you guess what it is? Hi and welcome to this enormous parcel. Look, look at the side, look, that's, that's a standard sized hand next to it. It's big, it's big. Just to give you an idea of how big, I will just quickly grab a, um, a, a standard universal um, Tamiya 1 12th motorcycle kit. You can see there. Da! Well, that wasn't quite as um, as neat as anticipated because I kind of, you know. Uh, ended up headbutting the camera on the way up there. That was a bit silly. But anyway, yes, there it is, upside down. There it is, the right way around. It is a massive, massive one sixth scale Tamiya Harley Davidson Fat Boy. Huge, huge thank you to Lee Eagles. Thank you very, very much, who did me. A very good deal on this. These kits are really hard to come across now. Of all the one sixth kits, motorbike kits that Tamir have ever made, the only one I've ever had a hankering for and really, really wanted to add to my collection and build is the Harley Fatboy. Um, of all of the others, the Katana, the CB750, none of them have appealed to me at all. They're, they're okay, but none of them were bikes that made an impression on me in my youth um, and as you know if you've watched a lot of my earlier videos you'll know that I ride motorbikes I haven't for some time now due to various reasons um, but I've had numerous motorbikes I've ridden numerous motorbikes over the years I love motorbikes and one of the first motorbikes to make a very firm impression in my mind was the Harley Custom Cruiser such as this um, there's something about them. They're just gorgeous. The sound of that V-twin motor, that lazy thump as they tick over. It's beautiful. I know, I happen to know, speaking to Lee, that this particular kit was a kit that was of great importance to him. You'll see it says there uh, for dad. This is one that he was going to build for his dad. So I know that this is a kit that was important to him. And I will hopefully be um, be doing this justice and uh, and honoring that for him by making a nice build of this so big thank you to lee i really really appreciate it and i will hopefully hopefully do this justice and um, and make you proud right lid off um here we go a thank you, Spid. Uh, obviously, it's me, my channel name. Um, and we've got some nicely protected bits and bobs with lots of bubble wrap. We've got a big instruction book. Damn, damn, that's big. Um, so, look, yeah, that's a big, big detailed instruction. That's more like a, a small novel. We have got some humongous fat tyres. Look at that, meaty, nice. And fronts are 140, 75, 17, 140 fronts. My, my first proper motorbike, the rear tyre was skinnier than the front tyre of this. And we've got lots of sprues. Now, I do know that he had started, there was a little part of this assembled. It was part of the, I think it was the two engine casings he mentioned. But we've got lots of sprues here. So, onto the bench. To begin with, we'll take a quick look at the instructions. Um, we have got very nice black and white box art. Then we have all the typical Tamiya descriptives. Gives you a bit of history on the vehicle, etc. This is common for the vehicle kits. The usual Tamiya 
sort of be careful, use these tools, do this, don't chop your fingers off when you're cutting things off the sprue, that kind of thing. We have a UK registration plate, so that's kind of nice. We have France, we have Deutschland, we have Italy, we have a Euro one. And uh, we've got a Japanese one, uh, Wisconsin, which uh, is only fair being an American bike. Let's take them out and can actually look at them a bit better. Um, so not exactly a huge amount of decals, but you've got the, uh, the three different speedometer decals and, uh, and then various badges and what have you. And then we have got the typical instructions, which are your standard Tamiya fare, which are very clear, very detailed, step by step. As you can see, I'm not going to linger on these. At the very end, you've then got the decal call outs and the different registration plates, which is why you get so many different backing plates to fit them onto. And there's the UK one. And then we have got a parts call out. I love these. I love it when they include these in kits. All kits should have one of these because these are essential, especially if you're buying a kit second hand because you can take this out, take all the sprues out of the box and actually compare them side by side and see exactly what you've got. I love these. Fantastic. Well done, Tamiya. So here, up close in Glorious Technicolor, uh, you can see that they're unlike the 112th kits, which have quite a thick wall with just a thin ring for the tire rim to slot into. These are in fact hollow and quite squidgy, which is nice. Uh, the tread pattern is really, really nice. And obviously with that foaming, that's going to give them a much more realistic kind of look and squidginess, which is, which is uh, it's good. I like that. I like that a lot. And then on the rim of the tire wall, you can see the Harley Davidson branding, which is presumably they would have tires made for them by a tire company and branded with their name. And they would be supplied to them accordingly uh, for their new release models. And then the sizes, so they're, they're fully marked on both sides. And likewise, the front tire, same exact same kind of thing. Nice and squidgy, and obviously uh, will be realistic with the foam packing in, and then the branding on the tire wall. Hmm, very nice. We'll quickly have a look in this little sorting box, uh, parts box, at the ready built section. As you can see, as already mentioned there, you've got two cylinders with the studs for the cylinder barrels, and the two halves of the crankcase, and that is quite literally all that's been assembled of this. So that's quite nice. That uh, just needs a little bit of sanding and what have you on there. And so you've got these two bits and the two halves of the crankcase. Down there, we have got the handlebars, which as I mentioned, are metal. The real beauty, of course, is a metal part it will look like a metal part rather than a plastic part that's been chrome plated. So that's nice. We've got the um, toothed drive belt and that's even got a little part number on there. I don't know if that's a genuine part number as per the real thing. Um, I'm guessing it must be because it current continues around there so that's a nice little touch as well. We've got a couple of metal fork stanchions and that is interesting because I was thinking to myself when I knew that this was on its way I was thinking to myself I might actually try turning some fork legs from aluminium or, or something similar on the lathe on my little uh, unimat. Uh, but it actually has metal fork legs, so that's kind of cool. A little screwdriver. The um, just various little metal bits, springs and what have you. That's a divider there. So that's that's nice. We'll pop those back in there. And, uh, and then these are the ring spanners or box wrenches. And all the vinyl tubing for the hose. And then this one holds all of the relevant metal bits, some really, really nicely turned bits. These I'm assuming are going to be for the rear wheel hubs. And um, those probably for the front maybe, I'm not sure, maybe the fork, uh, the fork leg tops or something like that. Here we've got all of the clear parts which are pre-coloured, um, which is a little bit unusual. And it's not often you see this in Tamiya kits, certainly in the, in the 112 kits. And it's no bad thing, but uh, although it's, it's not particularly a problem, I use the Tamiya clear colours to airbrush the clear parts um, when I make vehicle kits from Tamiya anyway. Uh, but we've got pre-coloured reflectors and indicator lenses, and then we've got rear tail light lenses and red 
colour reflectors and what have you. A little slot there for the white clear bit, which is nice because that will mean it, that that will be white to reflect and light up the, that's the bit there that lights up the number plates. Clear parts for the headlight and the little bit there obviously for the insert of the tail light and then the license plate, the different size license plate backers as it were. Uh, this is part of the gearbox assembly. Uh, this is basically the, uh, the primary drive unit which connects the engine to the gearbox on the Harley Davidson. And I think this is probably part of the oil tank unless it's another part of the gearbox. I'm not sure. There's, there's a lot of parts. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going to be what exactly just yet. That's obviously the fork yokes top. These are the, um, that looks like a starter motor and these look like calipers, um, pistons for the caliper horn. Uh, some bits are recognizable. So that's that sprue there. These next sprues are two identical looking ones. And these are obviously the cylinder fins, which are individual fins. Um, so rather than just a big lump that, that slides on, you've got the cylinder barrel there and then all of the fins which stack up one on top of the other and they all go through the, uh, the rods, just like the real thing. So that's kind of nice, uh, a nice little touch. And obviously there are two sets because there are two pistons. Here we've got the rear swing arm. Uh, these are quite cleverly designed. They're designed in such a manner so that at a glance they look like a hardtail design, which is again is part of the whole uh, chopper um, and custom motorbike style um, from way back when. And they would originally have had um, very little suspension. You would have had a hardtail, which is no rear suspension at all. It would have just all been part of the frame with the wheel bolted straight on, a sprung saddle, and then something like Springer forks. And then as um, things progressed, suspension progressed and uh, and technology progressed with it and things changed. But what Harley Davidson did was keep the look and appearance of a hardtail by using this rear swing arm assembly, which actually looks like it forms part of the frame. So once it's in place, you've got the frame rails coming down here and this actually looks like it's part of the frame, but it's actually a working suspension unit. Here we've got the rubbery plastic sprue. And I've got to say now I've got this out of the bag. This is amazing. Um, I'm actually going to zoom in so you can see this up close. The texture of this is superb. I love it. So here we are up close and personal. You can see this is the big saddle. Um, and I, I don't know how well this is going to come across on the video, but it looks just like real saddle material. It's incredible. It's, it's weird. It feels, it feels like plastic, but it has a lot of flex to it. So it's, it's not quite rubber, but it's not quite plastic. It's, it's a rubbery plastic. That's, that's the best description I can give you. You can kind of see there, it's, it's very flexible. Um, it's obviously a rubberized um, uh, styrene in somehow, they've, they've somehow managed to make a mix. That, so it's, it's styrene enough that you could actually cut it, shape it and what have you. Because one of the problems with rubber parts on a sprue is they're really, really hard to trim and make look neat. So for example, you cut these off and then if you try and trim them with a knife, it would be a nightmare to try and make them look neat. Uh, but this, I can tell already, because it's hard enough, it would actually work really well, but the texture on this is just incredible. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I know it seems strange to enthuse about something like this, but it really is lovely. It looks just like the real thing. It's amazing. Uh, you've got the seat, the saddle strap there. You've got the rear seat there, which obviously sits just behind this one. You've got this big, wide, comfy, Massey Ferguson type saddle for your, uh, to sit your behind on as you're cruising down route. To Route 66 and all that business. Uh, here you've got your um, handlebar grips and uh, your rear passenger pegs and your big, big running board footboards with the Harley Davidson logos um, that you can sit uh, sit your big your big Harley Davidson boots on while you're cruising. Next up, we've got um, shiny and chrome. It's all shiny and chrome, shiny chrome. Um, now it's out of the bag, it actually looks shinier than it did in the bag. Looks like a fairly thick coating as well. 
and I will be quite um, I will say straight up front I'm probably going to be stripping most of this I will leave things like the headlight and the headlight surround for certain I will leave I believe these are the indicators I shall probably leave those and the rear light unit there likewise uh, so some of these bits I will leave like that but things like the exhausts I'm pretty certain I'm going to be uh, dipping those in the bleach and stripping them cleaning them up and, and redoing them in a more realistic to me finish but very nicely molded typical to me a fashion and, uh, and very nice molding Next, we have the bodywork, as it were. We have got the fuel tank, two halves and the underside. You can see that's the slot that sits over the frame, the two halves onto that. And this particular tank, uh, like a few Harley Davidsons, has a strip which goes up the middle. I believe the actual unit, the, the real thing, I don't know about this particular model, but on some of them they're actually a split tank. They are two separate tanks which fasten together at the sides of the motorbike frame and have a strip up the middle that joins them. Uh, that looks like the plate which goes under the main saddle. That, of course, is the rear fender. That, of course, is the front fender or, as we know them in the UK, mudguards. We have foam. It's foamy, it's squishy. It curves round into a circle, which is perfect for fitting in tyres. What a coincidence. And we have some sticky stickers for the wing mirrors, which are nice and reflective. Oh God, the light is so bright. Uh, sorry, um, and some double-sided double sticky things. Next we have the frame. Look at the size of that beast. Look at it. Just look at the size. It's enormous. Damn. And Ted thinks his latest build is big. Pfft. He's oh, honestly, well, yeah, to be fair, it's actually much bigger, but you know, that is a, a massive, massive ship. So, you know, we'll, we'll let him have that one. Uh, but yes, it's big. It's going to be big. And you can see now what I mean about the shape of the frame and how the rear swing arm, which pivots here, follows on that shape and how it makes it look like it's part of the frame so it looks like it's a hardtail frame but it does actually pivot and uh, and works as suspension so they're the two frame halves which as you can see are monstrously large that is oh that looks like some kind of gauge for your screws so you can actually use that to stick your screws in and figure out which size is which i think that's quite a nifty extra little doodad we like that um, and then we have got some additional parts in here uh, all of which I have no clue about next oh, this is never ending this sprue after sprue after sprue uh, next up we have some more frame parts now we've got the exhaust covers so a large portion of the exhausts are actually not going to be visible uh, but I still think I'm going to strip those, nonetheless. I still I still feel like I'm, I'm going to have to strip those and redo them. The air cleaner cover, which obviously has a logo, which I believe I saw in one of the chrome bags. But we'll see that in a moment, I'm sure. Uh, the bullet style um, things for the indicators. That's obviously the cover for the drive belt, which is a belt instead of a chain. The headlight bowl. Um, this, I believe, is part of the cover for the oil tank. That's the cover for the coil packs. Um, these are the, the fancy bits which go up the rear fender, hold the rear fender in place, or the rear, the rear mud guard, um, or as it were. Uh, this, yeah, this again is part of the oil tank, uh, which I believe these are also maybe. Oh, no, no, they're the footboards for the running, the running boards or footboards. And then some other bits over here, which are bits of some description. But again, we will find out as we move along. This is going to be the longest what's in the box video ever because there are just simply so many sprues. But we are getting there, so bear with me. Uh, there's the huge dished aluminium um, wheels which this particular bike, the Fat Boy, is very well known for, famous for solid billet alloy um, machine from pure rare titanium by little Milwaukeean um, wizards or something. 
Um, very nice and shiny but kind of like a dull satiny finish and the bulk of these certainly on the kit art the inner bits are painted black a little bit more chrome these bits are quite obviously the Harley Davidson official accessory frisbees no they're not they're the brake discs what's that I hear there's nowhere near enough chrome I'm glad you said that because the next sprue is a chrome sprue and this is all parts of the engine case uh, so we've got the uh, the main Part of the primary drive, the connecting piece for the primary drive that connects your engine and gearbox together. We've got the uh, the huge chunky covers, 103 cubic inches, because the Americans don't mess about using these faffy little centimeters like the rest of the world does, cubic centimeters. They use cubic inches. So when you see an engine in America that says 103 CI, that doesn't mean it's like a little 100cc moped. That means it's massive because they use cubic inches and not cubic centimetres. Flipping that over, we've got some really nice little Harley Davidson badges, which will be for the tank. I was just thinking, what are they for? They'll be for the, for the fuel tank, of course. Very nice. The finishing on these is quite nice. It's, it's not... It's not quite satin, but it's definitely not as shiny as the shiny, shiny chrome. Um, they're quite nice. I like that. This is a thing. It's made of metal. I have no idea what it is, what it is or where it goes. It is a metal thing. Um, and it kind of looks like a tray, a, some, a stand, maybe a stand. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure, but we will find out no doubt as we go along. And the next sprue is a crow. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is actually the final sprue and it's another black sprue and it is part of the cylinder head fins. It appears to be um, a selection of parts of cylinder head fins by the look of it. And so uh, this looks like handlebar switch gear over here. Uh, yep, some more down there. This is the battery. That's the top of the battery and the sides. And some more brake caliper halves there. And that is about that. So that's that's pretty much the whole thing. This will be the inlet, of course. I was wondering what this was. Um, this is a Y piece and uh, Harley Davidson V twins are usually typically fed by a single carburetor through the air cleaner. So you've got the air cleaner, which is the, either the, the circle or the big oval, which has the air cleaner, then the carburetor goes into a Y piece and then this, this feeds accordingly into both cylinders. So what you have, the cylinders are reversed, they're opposite one another. So you've got inlet, inlet, and then exhausts on the other side. Whereas something like a Ducati, uh, the MH900, for example, um, they are designed in such a manner that you've got uh, the inlet at the back, inlet at the back, exhaust at the front, exhaust at the front. So you have to have two separate carburetors and two separate inlets. Uh, this particular design is what they've done is they've just flipped one of the cylinders around. So you've got an exhaust coming out of the back, exhaust coming out of the front, and then the carburetor feeding in to the middle. Um, quite a nice, simple, uncomplicated uh, way of doing it, I think. Uh, so that's that one. That's the final one. That's the entirety of the box and I am so excited about this. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful kit. It's the very first Tamiya 1 6th motorbike kit I've ever had. It's the only 1 6th Tamiya motorbike kit I've ever wanted, to be honest, unless they happened at some point, if anyone from Tamiya is listening, to make a really, really nice Tamiya 1 6th ZXR 750H1, dear Tamir executive, if you're listening, could you please do that? Very much, thank you. Um, because that's my that's my bike, that's my baby. I love it. I love it to bits. I've had that bike for so long. I love it, and I really, really, really want. I'd settle for 112, Mr. Tamir executive, but you know, 161 would be really nice, please. Anyway, that's the kit. It's a lovely kit. I don't know when I'm going to start it. I will definitely be filming it when I do. Um, because it's just too nice not to. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, unboxing and uh, overview. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video.